going to share to you uh, ha a, a brief history of the web and progressive web apps. So I should be the one there because I'll be reading notes. <laughs> So um, the web that we see today is very different from what it is before. In fact, the web itself is very progressive. Like in the early 90s, the web is considered as read-only or static, where it offers similarly to what you see on uh, product ads, brochures, and newspapers. So it wasn't really interactive that time. But still, uh, static web pages today are still very relevant and useful. But during that time, uh, how, who would thought that just a few years, um, the web will allow us to connect to other people? And then we have the social read, uh, the social read-write web. We became the participants of the web. We had blogs, social media, content sharing, and we have connected in more ways than ever before. And also, Ajax was also invented by that time, which allowed uh, greater interactivity on uh, various websites without, um, where it only updates a part of a web page when it needs to load content instead of loading the whole web page. And then we had the semantic read, write, execute web, uh, where we have fu fully utilized the power of the web to, uh, to use the, the power of the cloud on our web applications and infrastructures. We do not just read and write data like before, but we can also execute and process huge amounts of data. And different applications connect to each other through APIs, web services. And then we also have the mobile web. It's not a successor to the previous one, but somehow um, occurring simultaneously with uh, the semantic web. It's because uh, most websites, if not all, they have been prioritizing mobile users or treating them as first class citizens. Like they're making sure that a mobile user has full access to all the services un instead of just providing a light version. In fact, other websites or other mobile sites offer more features than when it was accessed on a desktop. For example, Instagram. Um, on the desktop website of Instagram, you can browse photos, comment, like, but you cannot upload photos. But using the mobile website of Instagram, from there, you have the ability to upload photos. And also, uh, new concepts on the mobile web are introduced, like uh, accelerated mobile pages, uh, SPAs, single page applications, and progressive web apps. And then this is the next era of the web uh, with the rise of AI powered services, chatbots, digital assistants, Sooner or later, the web will be fully utilized as an intelligent platform. So here's a summary of the features being added as, as time goes by. Um, it has changed a lot over the years. And it is really growing. The possibilities are endless. We can't imagine what would be the next offerings the web could be, but the fact is it is, um, it is really growing and many people believe on the capability of the web. And there have been attempts to standardize the web technology to use it and integrate it into 
different platforms. Like when the iPhone was launched in 2007, um, Steve Jobs envisioned that this, the, the standard for developing iPhone applications should be in HTML5. That way, um, development will be much easier. There are no uh, heavy build processes, no SDKs needed, just basic knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You're able to deploy or develop your iPhone apps. But unfortunately, uh, it did not push through in favor of the App Store. Also, uh, Firefox attempts to make a web-based mobile operating system where all applications will run as web apps. So imagine how fast and lightweight these apps would be. You may not need to add extra gigabytes of memory for or storage just for you to be able to install hundreds of apps. But its development uh, also discontinued in 2016. You have heard of PhoneGap, right? It is a uh, platform that allows you to create native apps using web technologies. And this one is fairly successful. Um, now every web developer can be a mobile app developer because of this. And it has a similar concept with Electron. Um, Electron allows you to develop applications with multiple windows, menu bars, uh, notifications, and everything a desktop application can provide, but also using web technologies. One notable product that is made of Electron is Visual Studio Code. And some of you might already know that Visual Studio Code is actually built with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. <coughs> and then in 2015, um, Google Chrome engineers have coined the term progressive web apps to describe apps that are utilizing the latest web features and that is installable and instantly engageable. And Google has forefronted in advocating progressive web apps. Um, especially on Android. And just a quick introduction for those who are not yet familiar with progressive web apps. A progressive web app is a website or a web app that behaves similarly to a desktop or mobile application. It aims to provide a seamless experience that the user is unable to tell the difference between a progressive web app and a native web app. So these are uh, examples of Google for progressive web apps. These are actually websites, but who would notice? Um, progressive web app solves a lot of problems in the mobile web. And why should you consider developing a progressive web app? Imagine 60% of the world's population is still using 2G internet. And if your website loads slower than average, users will abandon it. How long is that wait? In just three seconds of loading, most of your users will abandon or cancel the loading of your website. How about um, if if you want your if you want if you're considering a native app because you want to provide a service that works offline, um, then you're most likely considering to develop a native using native solutions, right? But the problem is the average user installs less than one application in a month. And new applications on the App Store has very low reach because installing a native app is a huge commitment for our users. Now, progressive web apps help solve these problems. Why? 
it is fast. Instead of normal web pages waiting for the network to send and receive a response, progressive web apps immediately provides a response that is cached on your device. It is network independent. And you can make it work offline or provide a custom interface for your offline users. And progressive web apps are integrated and they are intended to behave like real native apps. They are accessible to the home screen. They can send push notifications much as an app does and access device functionalities and features. Um, so this is the example of how you're able to install a progressive web app and engaging because you can remind your users to, to make them come back even if they, you have closed the application because it works on the background. Progressive web apps deliver a native experience with the broad reach of the mobile web. So we have the benefits of the mobile web and the benefits of native apps in one. If you're considering to provide a platform for your users, this could be your, uh, this could be how usually you plan your decision. If you want it to run on any device, you'll consider implementing it on the web. You want it to be quick and op easy to open and use. Unlike with apps, your users have to download and install it. So your service is not instantly accessible. accessible. But the benefits of apps is that it feels like it, it feels like it, it runs on its own, it has its own window, and most applications work fine offline. And you know that a mobile app has more powerful capabilities compared to a website. But with progressive web apps, you can run it on any device, it can be installed, it can be launched on the browser or through the uh, launcher, it has its, its own window, works offline, integrates with the operating system, it has powerful capabilities much like a native app does. So in 2015 it was uh, officially termed progressive web apps, then um, Apple added support, finally, for service workers in 2017. And then 2018, it was considered the year of progressive web apps where it had, uh, it had been supported by many major uh, browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge, and even Windows. Um, Windows allowed support for progressive web apps in Edge and Microsoft Store. Also, Project Fugu has been introduced and Lighthouse, uh, which is a tooling to inspect the performance and uh, speed and different aspects of your progressive web app. And then in 2019, since progressive web apps can now be installed in Mac. It means progressive web apps are now available to all mobile and desktop platforms. And if you still want it to distribute in the Play Store, um, Android now allows you to build Android apps directly from, from your uh, progressive web app site as a TWA or trusted web activity. So more and more features are likely um, arriving. So uh, what is the future of progressive web apps? Um, uh, the next speakers will, uh, will talk about it later. So that's all. Thank you.